first, I want to just talk about the difference between the call view pages and agency MVP, because that's important uh, for knowing the, who you should be calling each day. So here you'll see we have leads, prospects, and customers. Leads. A lead in MVP is someone that you don't have enough information or permission to complete a quote for. So whether you are doing like pre-quotes or teaser quotes, um, if you haven't actually reached them and spoke to them, if you haven't verified, you know, their, their date of birth and their vehicles, et cetera, you want to leave them here in this lead state. Now, within leads, we also have our API leads and the My API leads. API leads, these are the households that are coming in from your lead provider that you've integrated with Agency MVP. When they come to this API leads call you page, everyone at the agency is able to see these households on this page. The My API Leads page, this means that the agent, again, is purchasing internet leads for the agency, but they decided as the lead comes in that they would be equally distributed amongst the staff or whichever staff members they chose. Um, or if it's just one person working these leads, those leads are automatically being assigned to that one person. So that is going to go to your My API Leads page if that's how the workflow is set up. Now, once you start working, whether these API Leads or the My API Leads, um, that's when you can convert them to a lead and that's when they'll, they'll move over to the All Leads copy page. So that's the leads. Now we have Prospects. There's two separate pages here in the Prospects. We have a waiting quote and reviewed quote. Once you have spoken to that household, uh, once you have gathered their information, you verified everything, and you did the quote, that's when you can convert them to a prospect. So you'll see that little button at the top right that says convert to prospect. When you convert to prospect, they're going to move to an awaiting quote. So for example, if you spoke to the household and you said, all right, let me work on your quote. I'll give you a call back in about 15, 20 minutes you'll move them to a waiting prospect. Once you actually reach them, you get them on the phone on a war. I know some, some uh, leads might say, oh, just text it to me or email it to me. That's when you can mark them as quoted. And then they will move to the reviewed quote call view page. Think of reviewed quote as your quote sound closed. Lastly, we have our customers call view pages. Now, these call view pages over here, auto, home, umbrella, life, specialty, commercial, these are your cross-sell opportunity call view pages. These are the households that you have a cross-sell opportunity for entered in MVP that you said should be called today, right? The all, these are just all the customers um, that probably don't have a cross-sell opportunity that you still maybe just left and didn't pipeline out. So that's the difference between all the call view pages. Now you'll notice every call view page uh, has a different number of households that need to be called, right? So your goal each and every day is to work these numbers down to zero as close as possible, as close as possible down to zero as you can, okay? So if you have 88 API readings, your goal each and every day is to try to call all 88 of these people, right? Same with the prospects. If I have 46 awaiting uh, for me to call them back and send them that quote, I'm going to try to get through all 46 of these for the day. So each day, these numbers will be different. And remember that everyone's call view page, with the exception of the API leads call view page, looks different because every household can only have one owner. So those are the call view pages, okay? Now let's talk about these different filters that you're able to use within these call view pages. So on all the call view pages, you'll see the show filters option. Now by default, we will default your, fil your filters to view your hot leads, regular leads, and 
all the leads, all the households that have a phone number. That is what it will always default to, okay? Hot, meaning you marked a household as hot with an MVP. And by the way, hot means that uh, maybe you know something about this, this household that you can't really put into the algorithm form, but you want to give them some extra points. And they won't necessarily always go to the top of the copy page, just gives them a few extra points. Regular meaning they're not hot, they're not cold. And then has phone number, obviously they have a phone number. So these are what it defaults to, okay? Uh, cold, you don't really want to call through your cold uh, because if you mark someone as cold, this means that you don't want to do business with them. So I wouldn't even really go and look at my cold. Uh, call me page. This is more so I marked them as cold because I didn't want to necessarily delete them in case they were to uh, call back at a future date. And then we have different drop downs here as well. So filter by workflow. If you just want to call through the households that are on and currently on an ever quote workflow, for example, you can filter by that workflow. Uh, so that's what filter by workflow is. And then if you are an agency owner, you will see the filter by team member as an option in your account. This is only an option in the agency owner's account. Um, so filter by team member will allow you to see what your staff is working on on their call view page. So you can view one team member, multiple team members at a time, and your, your choice there. And then custom filter. We have several custom filters here that you can choose from. Current carrier. This is one of my favorites. If you know that uh, a carrier has taken a rate increase, right? Um, then you can choose current carrier. And then let's just say all state, right? This is going to show me anyone that I have on this specific call view page that I notated that they had all state. So in that quote section, the current carrier quote section where you can put in their current carrier information and you can put who they have, these are all the households that I have said currently have all state. So since all states take a rate increase, I don't know if that they have, I'm just saying that, and um, I'm going to fall through these households and say like, hey, I know you have all state, they just took a rate increase, let me go ahead and give you a quote. Um, you can do multiple carriers here as well. So that's one of my favorite custom filters. Uh, you can filter by date of birth, you can, uh, anyone who has an email address, marketing source, this is another favorite. This is one of the most used uh, custom filters. So you, you're going to eventually, you know, have like a mixture of a bunch of marketing sources, right? So maybe I just want um, to call through the list that I imported, right? So well, I'm going to go ahead. I have a cool X states list I imported. I'm going to work on calling those leads for today. So I'm just going to filter by that and call through those households. So that is the marketing source filter. Uh, we also have renewal date. So let me get rid of this marketing source one. I know, okay, so we are in March. Maybe I want to call through anyone who I notated as a renewal date coming up in April. So that's a great option as well. Um, state. There's agencies that are agents that have multiple agencies in different states. Um, so this filter right here um, is for those agents that have those agencies in, in multiple states uh, so they can filter and just call through those households. And then the last one is by zip code. Uh, you can just filter by zip code. So those are the custom filters uh, that you can filter by. If there's other filters, um, like custom filters that you would like us to add, feel free to send us an email to feedback at agencymvp.com. I will put that in the chat. Um, we'd love to hear what other filters you'd like to see here. And then the last filter is anytime morning, afternoon, or evening. So whenever you are putting in that household information, if you notated that they prefer to be called back at a specific time of day, you can choose that filter as well. Um, now, there 
There is a little bit difference. Uh, there's a difference in filters with the API leads. Um, so if you go to your API leads here, again, you can filter by state. So that's the only filter that you're able to choose for the API leads. But once you convert it to a lead and you take the ownership, that's when you're able to see those other filter options. Okay, so we talked about the difference in call view pages and the different filters so that you can decide how you want to call through these leads. Now let's talk about logging the phone calls. Now, it is best to log phone calls if you're just going through trying to reach someone. You're going to want to log the phone call directly from this call view page, from the call view pages, whichever call view page you're on. Um, so right here, I'm on my leads. This is the first person on my ranked leads, in my ranked leads. So I'll just click the little triangle to the left. And over here to the right, I'm able to log my phone call. Now, if you have not already, you can set up your default status. So I have it set up to unanswered because, well, let's be realistic. Most people tell answer, right? So unanswered. And then my default next action is called tomorrow. If you want to change those defaults, you can click your name at the top right and go to default values. And that's where you can change your call defaults. Now, it is extremely important that you are logging your phone calls in Agency MVP. Reason being, if you're not logging your phone calls, everyone is just going to continue to pile up on your call view pages, and you're not going to have a true call view page of who actually needs to be called today, okay? So over here, let's say I called Yenny, did an answer, just going to call tomorrow, um, maybe I left a voicemail perhaps, or I want to say it went straight to voicemail. You're able to put a note for that phone call right here. Now the call notes are different than your important notes. You only want to put call notes here. So I'm going to save that and then I'll just close Yenny and go to the next one. Here I have Jordan. Um, so let's choose a different option. Let's say answered. Jordan answered. Uh, but Jordan was on vacation and wants a phone call next week. So in that case, I'm going to choose, and this is a great example here, so I may not save this one just so I can show you all the options here, call back future date. So if someone says, hey, you know, call me back on Monday or I'm on vacation, whatever the case may be, we're going to choose the callback future date option. And let's just say they want me to call them on Tuesday. I'll put some notes here. You will have to put an important uh, a call note if they if you lock phone calls answered on vacation. And then we can save that. Now, another option we saw here is call back out or, hey, call me back today at 4 o'clock. If they give you a specific date and time to call them, that's when you'll want to choose that option. Because when you choose callback specific date and time, it will remove them from the ranking and it will put them up here as a priority lead. So let's go ahead and I already logged a phone call for Jordan. So let's go to David. And David said, you know, I'm, I'm working. Call me back at my lunch break today at, uh, let's just say, 2 o'clock. Call back during lunch. And let's save that. So, so far I've logged three phone calls here. Um, you will have to just refresh this page to get those households off of your call me page. So I logged these top three. When I refresh, those other two are going to be gone from down here. And now look, now David, the person I chose specific date and time for, now David is under my priority leads. I also have a reminder up here that I have a scheduled phone call in 43 minutes. 
Now, when I go to call David, it does look a little different. So we're going to choose whether it be answered, he didn't answer, or if I just want to cancel this uh, call because for whatever reason, maybe he already called in. Um, here, I'll just say left voicemail unanswered. Okay. Now that I've chosen one of those options, if I refresh my page, David goes comes out of my priority leads since I already called him and now he's back under my ranked leads. Some other options we have here. Um, okay, so we talked about tomorrow, specific date and time, future date. We also have call back today. This is most mostly going to be used for those API leads that you want to call multiple times a day. So unanswered call today. Call today is going to keep them on your call view page for the day. Um, another option we have here is to call them at their next renewal. That would be another reason why you want to put renewal dates into Age of the MVP because you can filter by renewal dates. And when you're choosing callback options, you can choose to call them back at renewal dates. So I would choose this option if I spoke to David and maybe he said, no, you're not competitive or I decided to go with someone else. You had a better rate. Um, so let's just say went with other carrier, but I may want to try calling him back at his next renewal and see if I can earn his business at a later point. Now, this date right here, December 21st, this is 30 days before his actual renewal date. So here, I see that I put, he's what calls, what you can do is put this person on an X date workflow. Now, pipelining, lot of the phone call and pipelining is separate than putting them on a workflow, two separate options. So he answered, He's going with another carrier. So I'm going to call him as, at his next renewal. Let me save that. And here I can see as well, he was pipeline till December 21st. So he's going away until December 21st. I'm not going to see him again unless I go in and search for him. But in addition, kind of like a little bonus, I'm also going to put him on his full, on a home XT, right? Um, so I'm going to put him on. Well, right now I only have this auto X date contacted workflow, but I'm going to put him on my home X date contacted workflow so that 45 days before his. All right. So again, assigning a workflow and pipelining that next action to separate actions. Okay. One does not depend on the other. You'll also see this if you have auto renewal dates in here, you'll see that same option. Um, the other option, which was on here for someone that I already pipelined, was call back uh, at the birthday of, of a member. So you'll see that option for males up to 25 and then females, I think up to 21, you'll see that option. So maybe uh, you, you weren't competitive because they have a young drive, then yes, by all means, go to that details page update whatever information um, you need to. You can also log phone calls from this page as well, um, but I wouldn't go to the details page for every single person that I'm logging the phone call for unless I actually get them out of the phone. Um, and then I had mentioned, let's see, uh, where is that right here? Best time to contact. So we saw that as a filter. And then right here for the current carrier, renewal, this is where you're going to be putting in that information. Okay. So current carrier renewal date, who their current carrier carrier is so that you're able to use those as filters uh, on your quality pages. Also, one more callback option that I forgot to mention is a claim fall off date. So you can choose to call someone back at their claim fall off date. Um, again, you'll see that here in the next action, it'll look something like this, but it'll give you the day 30 days before their claim falls off. Okay. And then, all right. And so that is 
again, how to efficiently log phone calls in MVP. Now, in case you did not see our announcement, uh, we did recently create an integration with Ring Central. So if you use Ring Central, MVP is able to automatically log the phone calls for you now. That means if you get an incoming call to your phone number with Ring Central, we can automatically log incoming calls as well as we will log outgoing calls through Ring Central as well, so long as we can match it to a household in your MVP account. Um, if you want to get more information about that, feel free to go to our help and support page and just type in Ring Central and you'll find information there. Okay, and um, last thing I want to talk about as far as logging phone calls is this home page. Uh, so two things here. Oftentimes, I see agents that are trying to use this home page as their call home page. This is not a call view page. This is to show your activity, okay? Now, on this page, you can see your call activity for the day. So I see that I had made five total call attempts today to three separate households. This is just showing you the quote activity or the sales activity, depending on which one you have selected here. Okay. Now from here, you are able to see, okay, Julia has had a total of 16 call attempts. Now on this page, uh, we recently added call activity. So here you're able to see the call activity for the entire agency. Uh, for your chosen time range, so I chose the last 30 days, I'm able to see in detail how many leads were called, how many API leads were called, how many hot leads, prospects awaiting, prospects quoted, how many cross-sale opportunities were called, and then the total households contacted for that time range, and the total call attempts, and lastly, total texts. So that's where you can see um, all of the call activity. Okay, that is kind of in a nutshell filters and best way to log phone calls efficiently in MVP. Um, so I'll open it up for Q&A. If you have any questions, you can type them in the chat. Um, you can type them in the Q&A box. If you raise your hand here in Zoom, I'm able to unmute you, I believe. Uh, so feel free to ask away with all of your questions. Also, um, this report, if you're an agent, this is similar to what you're receiving each night um, for as a call report. But now, instead of waiting till the evening time to receive that report, you're able to pull this up at any time of the day. And your staff is also able to keep track as well here. Um, if you don't have any questions or uh, while we're waiting for any questions, let me go ahead and put this contact information here. So uh, don't forget, we have that live chat located at the bottom right-hand side of your screen. That is the best way to reach us. If you ever have any questions, uh, feel free to use that live chat. We also have MVP University on our help page. So uh, you can click your name at the top and go to help and support. You can also click your name at the top and go to MVP University. That's where you're going to find all of our trainings, uh, previously recorded webinars as well. And we also have our emails, so support at agencymvp.com. Feel free to send us an email. If you have not joined our Facebook group, uh, feel free. Well, I, maybe everyone here is already on the Facebook group, uh, but the name of that group is Agency MVP dash members only. All right. So I'll stick around for another few minutes to see if anyone else has questions. Um, if not, thank you so much for joining me. And I hope to see you guys on our next webinar uh, for the month of April.